there she is, the Canon R7. Beautiful body. Look at the curves on that baby. Eh, I should probably dress her up and put a lens on her. Okay, there we are. The Canon R7 with the Canon 24 to 70 2.8. L series lens. Oh, it is gorgeous on there. Oh, oh wait, I probably should get some audio adapter on there. There it is, the Canon R7 with the 24 to 70 2.8 with the Tascam XLR. Oh, wait, I need XLRs. Okay, the Canon R7 24 to 70 L series 2.8 with the Tascam and the very super expensive Sennheiser 416. Maybe I, maybe I should go back a little bit. Um, let's change out that, that lens. All right, the Canon R7 with the Tamron 35 to 115, 2.8 to f4, and yeah, it's still expensive. Okay, um, let's get rid of that. Uh, microphone, uh-huh, yep, and the XLR adapter. Yep. Okay, let's add on the DJI mic. Okay, here we go. The Canon R7 with the Tamron 35 to 115, 2.8 to f4, and the DJI mic. Yeah. Now that's affordable. Hi, I'm Jared with VisibleTour.com, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video. So, when it comes to an R7, there's multiple setups. And some people will think of the R7 as kind of an entry-level camera, but this is by far not an entry-level price. Let's start out kind of looking at this camera as it is right now. We have the 24 to 70 RF 2.8 L lens. It is absolutely sharp. It is absolutely gorgeous and I absolutely love it, but my pocketbook does not. This lens goes for about $2,400. Now, you can get it on Canon refurbished for around $2,000 or $2,100, and then if you wanted to add on some insurance with it, um, you can add on for about another $150 to $200. It's a fantastic lens, and it would not disappoint, but it would hurt your pocketbook. Um, then let's look at this. This is the Tascam, the Tascam integrated XLR adapter for the R3, R5C, and the R7. These are the only three cameras at this point that utilize this XLR direct connection. Now, when it comes to audio, the R6 that's filming me right now and the R7 without this adapter is just a 16-bit audio file which is the majority of what we're all used to anyways. So what does the Tascam do besides giving you an XLR hookup, which is a 48 volt phantom? It gives you 24 bits. Now, if everybody's used to 16 bit when they're listening to YouTube, what does 24 bit do to you? Well, it utilizes a lot more depth perception, I guess you could say. So the depth perception of audio is even greater. So instead of hitting your peaks really loud and blowing them out and not being able to recover them or being too low and not be able to raise that up, now there's a lot more bit depth and that allows you to utilize this audio even better. So in a world of log, log gives you high dynamic range when it comes to image. Bit depth gives you high dynamic range when it comes to sound, and that is much needed when you're not perfect and you're running and gunning. So you can actually recover, fix your peaks, fix your lows, and right now I am utilizing that with the XLR hookup on the Tascam. I'm overlaying whatever is being recorded onto this camera, which is my voice. The bit depth really is fantastic, but sometimes it doesn't matter if you don't have a great microphone. So right now I am utilizing the most expensive microphone I have ever used in my entire life. Now, that doesn't mean this is the most expensive microphone out there, there's a lot more expensive ones, but this is the most expensive that I have ever used. This is the Sennheiser 416. This retails for about $1,000, and that's exactly what I paid for this microphone that's boomed right above me. So that connected to this, 
$500 when it comes to the uh, Tascam XLR adapter, $1,000 when it comes to the 416 Sennheiser. So now we have $1,500 just in audio, plus probably another 15 in cables, $2,400 on the lens, $1,500 on the body. This is not a cheap setup. This is actually hitting the C70 type range. So the C70 retails for about $5,500, has built-in mini XLRs, so you've eliminated the $500 cost that you needed there, but you still need a microphone, which we are utilizing the Sennheiser 416, so add on another thousand. But if you wanna be on a budget, Rode does make fantastic ones for about $600, and even the NTG Two, I believe is about $250 or the NTG one, which I've used many years in the past. And that has been a fantastic lens as well. Who is the Canon R7 for? Well, I think it is for entry level, getting into the mirrorless, utilizing high quality video and photography. But I think it honestly could be for a seasoned professional like myself. Now I utilize the R6, I used to shoot on the XHA1. This is a camera that came out in 2008 and that is solely video. It was 1080i at the time and that was a fantastic camera. This thing blows it away. So does the R6. That blows it away as well. So the R7, in my opinion, makes an awesome B camera. Now this setup I have right now, I'm going to keep. I'm not going to change it. This is probably the most professional best setup you can have with the R7, even the best setup you can have with the R3 or the R5C. The great thing when it comes to this Tascam, now if you didn't have the Tascam, if I was just going to use say the um, Rode VideoMic Pro Plus or the Rode NTG or the DJI Mic, um, I have to go into the settings in the camera. I have to change the settings when it comes to the volume in there and make sure it sounds perfectly. But when it comes to the Tascam, I can just plug in directly my headphones. I can listen, I can hear what I'm supposed to hear, and then I can manually touch these controls back here during a shoot without even shaking the camera and adjust the volume and the gain and make sure everything is working correctly. So here you have a tangible physical buttons that you can make sure you're set perfectly. And then all you have to do is just set that down and you're not gonna be able to touch any of those buttons, mess them up, screw them up. And I love that because right now, if you don't have this and you wanna change the settings, you have to go into the settings mode and a lot of the times these cameras aren't gonna let you do that while it's recording. When it comes to the Tascam, now you have professional audio. Um, the other awesome thing with this Tascam is it does lock in place, it utilizes the um, electronic connection, again, giving you digital audio 24-bit instead of the 16-bit. That is huge. That is something that is a game changer when it comes to these mirrorless cameras. And I would say this is the closest thing you can get to a C70 without the C70 prices. Now, I will tell you, I obviously had to boost this up in price to get close and get that quality. It isn't giving you C-Log 2, but you get C-Log 3, and that is fantastic as well. So again, could this be a cinema camera for somebody? I think it could. Um, I think we are so spoiled with awesome cameras that we're always looking for the best one. And honestly, the best camera is the one that's in your pocket right now. I mean, this obviously isn't gonna fit in my pocket, but you know what I mean. It's the best camera I could use. So you're wondering, do I really need a high-end L-series glass lens like the 24 to 70? And the answer is no, you definitely don't. We've got the Tamron 35 to 150. It is a f2.8 to an f4. It is sharp, beautiful, gorgeous. I've been using it for the last couple of months. And I've even thought of selling this lens and utilizing that one most of the time because it does what I want it to do especially on a speed booster. It is great on the R6, it is great on the R7. Um, I absolutely love it. So this is obviously an overkill. This is huge. This is the best you can do for the R7. This is the best somebody could set up the R7 to give you high quality video. Is it worth it? I don't know. 
I mean, I've spent a lot of money on this camera boosting it up and I'm not sure. Maybe Sony would be a better option. Maybe doing the FX3 would have been a better option. I don't know, but I am having fun with this camera. There's a lot to utilize with it. The autofocus is amazing. Um, Canon's color, I hate saying it, science is pretty good too. I love it. Um, been shooting Canon for the last 15 years. Hasn't disappointed me. So you tell me, is this a camera that you want or is Sony the camera you want or is the Panasonic, by the way, the Panasonic GH6? I used to own the GH5, awesome camera. Maybe I should do a versus on the R6 with this. The GH6 and the R7 color-wise are gonna be very similar nowadays. You are getting a smaller sensor when it comes to the GH6, the R7, bigger sensor, less noise, you know, and that's gonna be something to consider as well. Let me know which camera you're considering. Is it the Canon R7, R6, R5? Is it even Canon? You tell me which camera you're considering. I'm curious, is it gonna be Canon? Is it gonna be the R7 even? Or are you looking at Sony or even Panasonic's GH6? Those are awesome options as well. I kind of went down this rabbit hole of the R7, adding on all these things. I can utilize this in my business. I can also sell it down the line and go in the direction of a GH6 or a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Dang it, there's too many options. <laughs> I love it. It is very frustrating because honestly, it comes down to the person and the photographer, the videographer, and really not the camera. It's a tool, but we love toys. We love our tools. And so that's why we're gonna keep going down these rabbit holes. Let me know what you think of this sound. Again, this is the Sennheiser 416, $1,000 microphone. Is it worth it? I think so, but that could be subjective. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and like, and check out these videos that are coming up here. Pick one, go down that little, you know, rabbit hole and enjoy the show. Till next time, I am Jared with VisibleTour.com and I'll talk to you later. Bye.